Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this ninety-minute masterclass on rail cybersecurity. On behalf of Zenith Rail Academy, IIT Madras Pravatak, and Fist Academy, I welcome you all to this rail cybersecurity masterclass. Uh, I've been reading comments here, and uh, uh, many of you have mentioned that the audio quality is not good. Uh, we are apologetic about it, and uh, I will separately take up each of the points shown in the video during this presentation towards the last. So um, uh, let's start the session. And uh, today we have with us uh, a very eminent real cyber, uh, very eminent cybersecurity expert, uh, Professor Mohan Ram. Uh, who has taken out his precious time to uh, take up this masterclass and uh, share his knowledge and experience related to the rail cybersecurity and the program which has been designed under his uh, able guidance. So uh, as we move forward, uh, for, for people, uh, I would like to put the objective for this particular webinar. So there are two clear goals that we have uh, of organizing this webinar. First is to create awareness about rail cybersecurity as a career option among rail professionals and IT professionals. So this is uh, objective one with which we have uh, uh, planned this webinar. Uh, as we are talking to people in the rail industry and even the uh, IT industry, to about this course program and taking their feedback. Uh, we are uh, coming across many uh, interested candidates who would like to uh, consider rail cybersecurity because everyone, if you look at social media, you see uh, data coming up on rail cybersecurity, concerns coming up on cybersecurity, uh, market size being talked about in billions on social, on social media. So definitely, uh, there is a buzzword about cybersecurity and rail cybersecurity both. So we wanted to conduct a knowledge session under the uh, uh, guidance of uh, Professor Mohan Ram to talk about this subject in detail so that our uh, community of rail professionals could understand uh, nuances of rail cybersecurity as a career, as an industry, and take a well-informed call for their career growth. So this is uh, one of the key objectives with which we have organized this webinar. The second one is uh, IIT Madras Pravartak, Zenith Railway Academy and FAST Academy under the guidance of uh, uh, Professor Mohan Ram and eminent rail experts uh, have designed a focused uh, training program in the form of an executive certification program from IIT Madras Pravartak in rail cybersecurity, which is expected to start in first week of March. So we have an orientation session on uh, 25th of February. After that, we'll be starting the classes in the first week of March. So uh, we also wanted to share information about this uh, wonderful course program that uh, we have created for rail professionals who are looking at uh, considering their career growth in rail cybersecurity and also for IT professionals who are looking at uh, a sector specialization. So going forward from here, uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, this program in a in a brief right now, uh, which I will be elaborating to after uh, Professor Mohan Ram's session. So, uh, global railway cybersecurity market size is estimated to be around fourteen uh, billion by twenty thirty. So, this is a massive growth that we are expecting in this uh, specialized sector. That is. Uh, only a industry focused growth is what we're talk, talking about. Cybersecurity as an industry is multi times, uh, many fold uh, uh, larger than this. But rail cybersecurity, if you are talking about, it's, it's still 14 billion by 2030. So uh, this program has been designed to create early mover advantage for rail professionals in this industry. So this is an evolving industry presently maybe at an, a nascent level, but over next five, six years, this there is expected to be a huge boom in this industry. So uh, this is going, this is a 110 plus hours of live training led by industry professionals, such as Professor Mohan Ram. There's the most important aspect about this uh, certification program is 
simulation based practice sessions which is not provided by uh, any any uh, 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 training player in the country so there's a 30 plus hours of simulation case based practice session to apply you, your knowledge and learning in real world scenarios uh, the classes would be weekend have been planned on weekends saturdays and sundays to suit the working professionals and we are also for it professionals or rail uh, industry professionals we are also offering an orientation course to understand the sector better as a complementary course program for Zenith Railway Academy. So uh, who should attend this course we have designed for engineers or professionals who wish to take early movers advantage into this uh, rail cybersecurity market. It's designed for mid and senior level rail executives of rail industry uh, who, who would be managing security related concerns or would be uh, part of projects where security concerns of uh, data critical systems would be uh, of immense importance. Uh, so uh, over, uh, so now the important part is, uh, so uh, now we have designed a course program uh, for the sector and we would like to discuss the relevancy of this particular sector in today's session. So we have also invited uh, Mr. PR Kulkarni, who's an, who's a rail, uh, so he was a professional working uh, in rail cybersecurity with a leading company, rail company in Bangalore to talk about how is it like, uh, uh, how is the life of a rail cybersecurity professional working in the industry? So he will uh, take up your questions. So uh, towards the end of the webinar and uh, for people who do not know about Railway Academy, I'll just take one minute of brief about Railway Academy. We are a... Uh, uh, railway and smart mobility focused training company uh, working with uh, top uh, professionals around the world. Uh, so we offer a virtual academy for uh, rail professionals and people who are looking at uh, building career in rail domain. We've got training programs across uh, RAMs and safety, railway application engineering, signaling, electrical engineering, uh, rolling stock. Uh, we also provide IRSE coaching uh, solutions project management, rail management. And uh, now we are coming up with executive programs with IAMs and IITs uh, to uh, create a more robust uh, training experience for our community. So uh, you can follow us on our social media. You can scan these QR codes and uh, follow us to get updates about masterclasses like these. Uh, important information about this is uh, webinar is that if you have queries, please type in your queries in the chat box. I'll take them up and we'll uh, ask them uh, from our speaker at appropriate intervals, or we will take your queries after the presentation is done. Please do not unmute and uh, speak during the session. It interrupts the flow of the trainer. So uh, we'll take a break at 8 p.m. of five minutes. Uh, you can type in all your questions, queries in the chat box, and I promise to take each uh, one of your queries after the session. Uh, presentation will be followed by the Q&A session where I will invite our industry expert to take a few questions. Uh, recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel so that you can refer it later. And if there is any technical glitch, you can. Uh, we will share the uh, YouTube uh, video link on your email ID with which you have registered. So without uh, taking any more time, I'll invite our speaker, uh, an expert, Professor Mohan Ram, to start the session. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sumit, uh, for that introduction. And uh, dear participants, welcome to this webinar. Uh, I have uh, done my MTech from Rookie uh, way back in 1986. For the last 38 years, I've been uh, in the IT industry. And for the last 12 years, uh, I've been a practicing cybersecurity professional. I have a company and the good part is, uh, you know, uh, we are partnering with IIT Madras and the International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, uh, to do these cybersecurity courses. And uh, we offer MTEC uh, in cybersecurity for the IIIT Bangalore students. And they have all been placed very well and doing very well in big companies like Qualcomm, uh, Samsung, Siemens. Uh, Deloitte and uh, McAfee, these sort of companies, which uh, we are very happy as a faculties. When our students do well, we are very happy. 
So I'm very happy to be present uh, in this webinar uh, and introduce uh, the cybersecurity relevance for the rail industry. Uh, some of you may already know about it. For those of you who know about it, it's a, like, like a refresher. For those of you who are new to this and uh, new to the cybersecurity itself, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, the relevance of uh, uh, railways uh, security and its importance in the next maybe about 45 50 minutes. Okay. So let me share my screen and uh, we'll move forward with the presentation. <clears throat> I hope my screen is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, welcome once again to this webinar. Uh, I run a company called Forensics, Intelligence, Surveillance, and Security Technologies. So it's, it's primarily the bottom most part is security technologies. We work both in cyber and physical security. On top of it, we have built our own layer of surveillance layer uh, and then intelligence layer as well, a dashboard for the control rooms to uh, see the problems and integrated with the SOC, which is the AML based SOC for intelligence. And then, you know, in case uh, an act of uh, uh, perpetrating crime is caught, you need forensics. So we have a forensics. So we are a 360 degree shop for uh, cyber security. And I'm also uh, very uh, fortunate to be associated with uh, two leading institutes, which is IIIT Bangalore, International Institute of Information Technology Bangalore, and IIT Madras. Uh, so IIT Madras, uh, current director, Professor V. Kamakoti, is uh, in the National Security Advisory Board for cybersecurity, and he advises uh, uh, Mr. Ajit Doval on the policies related or the, uh, solving the you know, attacks and uh, preventing uh, possible attacks and other things. He's very keen, hands-on man. Despite being a, a director of IIT Madras, uh, he's very actively involved. And he's my guru, mentor, and he has been supporting our programs uh, with a lot of inputs uh, because he has uh, knowledge of what's happening uh, to this country's security. And uh, he tells him on, you need a lot of people. Like, you know, uh, you might remember uh, on the 10th of November, government came with uh, you know, a notification that healthcare industry is now classified as a critical information infrastructure. But that news came to me much before, I think, the August itself. He said, no, yeah, we need uh, something like 400,000 data protection officers across uh, these big hospitals. So we need to do some specific programs and all he was giving a hint. So we have been very fortunate to be associated with such luminaries and uh, uh, IIT Madras faculties. Uh, the best of the cryptographers are produced by Professor Pandurangan. We take top 20 cryptographers of the world. At least 50 of them would have been associated with Professor Pandurangan. He just last year retired from IIT Madras and he has become a Satish Javan chair uh, at the IAS, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So he's still associated with our programs. And you know, if you are successfully registering for this program, you will see a couple of uh, basic mathematics, which fantastic explanation of the cryptography as a lecture from Pandurangan sir as well. So we have been fortunate to have such great faculties associated with us from IIT Madras. And uh, just for those, I saw the list of people Simit had shared, uh, they are from different uh, uh, no, uh, countries and different uh, organizations. Some of you may know about IIT Madras, but some of you may not. So I've added a, a slide. Okay, this is the agenda. Uh, we are going to be covering vulnerable uh, rail networks and need for cyber security, the staggering market size and opportunity need for cyber security professionals. We're also going to give a quick look at uh, the simulation based learning, which is our cyber bay, and industry growth and job opportunities for railway professionals. And this program highlights so which will uh, carry it uh, at the end and q and This is our agenda. So as I said, you know, those of you who don't know about IIT Madras, uh, the Institute of National Importance passed by uh, an act of parliament. Five IITs were set up in 1959. IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, IIT Chennai, Amaras, uh, Karakpur, and Kanpur. 
2005 IIT which was established. And each one of them had a collaboration to handle and get the technologies in. IIT Madras uh, had German collaborations. So you find a lot of German technologies uh, and orientation and the fundamentals of uh, science which is being taught. Like, you know, we, we have a, a mechanical sciences building. It's, it's not engineering, mechanical engineering. Electrical sciences block. So it's it's all science. That's the way Germans consider. They consider science is the basis of all engineering. And that's the reason why we have MSB, ESB, CSB type of uh, building sciences, uh, mechanical sciences blocks. So that's how the buildings are named. So it's a very, very uh, rigorous uh, you know, academic uh, institute with uh, activities, 16 academic departments and several uh, uh, academic research centers. Like we have a Robert Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence and we have a uh, uh, no, IITM Pravarta for cyber physical systems, things like that. And IITM is a residential institute with 580 faculties and uh, 9,500 students from 18 countries. Uh, and uh, no, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be. And uh, we have been ranked as number one overall institution in the category of uh, Indian engineering uh, in 2023. And this is the seventh year we have consecutively you know, been the number one in engineering institute of India. And uh, we have also been uh, you know, judged uh, top innovative institution in the country of ranking by innovation achievements, uh, which is uh, ATAL ranking for in the, in the institution on in the innovation achievements in 2019. And we also got it at 2022. Uh, 2023 is yet to be announced. But yeah, so we are uh, very proud to be uh, leading that. And one of the things, uh, the last 20 years of my association with IIT Madras at various levels, they give a very, very good emphasis on the foundation. The basics have to be very clear. So even in the cybersecurity course, the basics are taught in a very, very rigorous manner so that you are clear about the fundamentals, why, what, and how. So this is something which is there. And then, you know, we have... Uh, uh, the process and methodologies as a second layer of from the foundation you have processes and methodologies. and then finally the tools and the techniques which is taught there because a tool may be very popular this year but you know uh, next year they may have filed a bankruptcy and gone out of business okay so this is the problem you know which american industry faces so we are not emphasizing on any particular tool yeah we are going to cover a lot of tools to do, like uh, assess the threat, to predict the threat, to detect the threat, and protect the IT assets. All these tools are going to be there. But uh, since your foundation methods are strong, tools uh, are immaterial. Because most of the tools will do the same function, but we may have to do some juggling around. Of somebody may have to type a comment, somebody may have to go and click some icon. That may be the difference. But if you are clear about the fundamentals, any tools you can be you know very adopted to so that is a fundamental so uh, that's maybe the one of the reasons why they are very successful and number one engineering institute is my conclusion it's my personal opinion but yeah in the same model even the every academic uh, uh, you know, proposal we put for approval they see how far you are uh, you know, uh, emphasizing on the fundamentals like, you know, as I said, no Professor Pandrangan will take the maths behind cryptography, which is never taken by anybody. Uh, they will or, uh, directly go into an RSA algorithm or uh, Duffy and Key algorithms and you know, start uh, talking about various methods of encryption. But the maths behind it, how would they evolve? And the, the science behind it is very, very important. So our course is a little bit so that way oriented. Uh, as I said, we have been fortunate to be mentored by senior professors of IIT Madras to give this course to all of you. So that's where you know, it's there. And so now going back to the agenda points, some of the recent breaches uh, in the railway sector. I've done some research to find out what sort of uh, breaches have happened and the, what type of attacks. So of course, there is a huge, like you know, 90 plus case studies are there in the repository of attacks. And uh, some of them, which I've taken just for an example to just set the context of a need for cybersecurity in the railway system. Okay. So, so ransomware is the main threat to the rail sector. Uh, those of you who are familiar, uh, the right side view is the control room. It's uh, 
the heart and the you know, brain of the railway operations. Uh, operating control center is what the operations control center is a uh, very big uh, portion of the railway. So there, you know, there are a lot of sophisticated automation and interlinking third party systems and uh, uh, you know, external systems are you know, synchronized to give a view of uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the network, the real traffic network is going to be like and what should be the priority and other things for the controller to set and give the signals and the point changing, interchanging, interlocking, all these things are associated from this control room. And ransomware is the main threat uh, on the railway sector. This is from the ENISA, which is European Union Agency for Cyber Security's report. And uh, they are accounting 45% of cyber attacks. Data related threats accounted for 25%. So, this is the two major things which is across the industry, right? You take banking, financial services, insurance, anywhere, these numbers will be approximately in the same range. Data breaches is around 25 to 30%. Ransomware or malware attacks are 50, uh, 45 to 50%. So that is the major thing. And uh, as did the denial of service or distributed denial of service or ransom denial of service. Uh, there has been very little about the ransom denial of service attacks in uh, the railway industry. It's been more prevalent in the healthcare as well as the financial sector. But there has been one incident there out of the 90, uh, which has been documented there. Breach or the intrusion and exploiting the known IT vulnerabilities. This is something which, you know, you know uh, we all use uh, Windows and uh, Linux and the Unix type of systems. And they're all uh, you know, prone for uh, known vulnerabilities are documented. And uh, if you are not keeping a threat intelligence team to track this uh, you know, updates or the patches, uh, somebody can exploit that if, it is, if you are not updating the patch or uh, the security uh, no, uh, uh, updates or uh, signatures have not been updated. So that accounted for about 15% fraud and uh, impersonation, counterfeit, malware, and supply chain attack uh, are for 5%. So this is the overall scenario of the study on railway sector by Enisa. So the same thing in the graphics. Uh, between 21 and 22, the comparison is put in there. Ransomware, data-related threats, the OS, DDoS, breach intrusion, and vulnerability exploitation. In most of the cases, uh, ransomware and the DDoS have gone up significantly high, and the breach and intrusion has also gone up. But uh, the data-related threats have come down because people have started using uh, better techniques to safeguard their data uh, using some good encryption, key management, and other things. So that could be the reason why has come down and uh, people's awareness uh, has increased because organizations have con uh, no, consciously put effort to educate their workforce. So the vulnerability exploitation has come down. So this is a broad scenario, a summary of where the rail industry's uh, cybersecurity posture on date. So some case studies, as I said, the targeted systems uh, where, you know, uh, 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 major tire, uh, major attacks have been targeted at IT systems, which includes their uh, passenger operation, ticketing systems, mobile apps, and uh, PIS, the passenger information systems on displays, and uh, causing the you know, uh, inconvenience to the public. That's been there. And there has been a Swedish public transport uh, in August 21, uh, when the consumer is uh, unable to purchase the ticket due to the infected system. And notable data thefts are in the NS, North, Norfolk Southern, and the Omnitrax, and New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority, and uh, as well as the passenger operators like Metrial in Britain and uh, local dog in uh, Denmark. So there has been data breaches as well as the malware attacks or ransomware attacks that have happened in the railway systems. So the operational attacks, the OT part of the attacks have also happened. The Danish uh, state railways uh, had a breach in services or stoppage in services in October 2022. And their ICT provider uh, was you know, the victim of the cyber attack. As a result, the, uh, the drivers could not access the key for safety critical IT systems disrupting their operation for several hours. That's something which happened in October. And January, 
the group of activists launched a ransomware attack in the uh, Belarusian railways and in an attempt to disturb the Russian. Okay. Uh, this is that uh, you know, Ukraine Russian uh, war. There are pro and anti uh, you know, hackers uh, team which is working to support uh, you know, each of their country of their liking. So the group of uh, the group deployed uh, modified ransomware in order to bring down the entire encrypted server database and workstation. So this is uh, operational hack in 2022. Uh, so exploiting the known vulnerabilities was the third one which we spoke about considering the issue. Uh, Anissa says there are two case studies which is standouts in the December 2021, Toronto Public Transport Agency. Uh, Temporarily took down the entire website as a precautionary measure when the Canadian government said that it is vulnerable to cyber attack. So as a preventive measure, they brought down the website to check and improve the security. A system vulnerability potentially allowing the customer personal data by, you know, Swiss Federal Railways uh, was also reported by an anonymous hacker in January 2022. So this happened through the known vulnerabilities, uh, known software uh, exploits, and as I said, you know, if somebody has not uh, updated the security patches or updated the signatures uh, or a threat intelligence, uh, you know, update given by the uh, you know, software or an application provider, if they ignore it, then you know, that can be exploited by a hacker. So these are all something which has happened there. So as a result of this, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Cyber security initiatives across the global railways sector has uh, begun. And you know, uh, it has always been a low priority. I have been working with uh, our own Indian railways for the uh, since 2000, or oh, sorry, 1993. Uh, the first CRIS passenger reservation system code was on the mainframe, was developed by me and my team. Right from that time, I have been associated with Indian railways. Uh, but safety and security, safety is, of course, considered. Security of IT systems has never been considered as a priority, even today. Even today, you know, we have been discussing about the uh, no, security things with the Indian Railways at the board level. Uh, the importance given is very low. Yeah, that's the way they are uh, reacting. So something which they don't realize since does not happen so far, there is no guarantee that it cannot happen in the future. Okay, so that is something which uh, we have been trying to educate. So as uh, Sumit, uh, during the introduction session said, it's projected to grow to about 14 billion in 2030. And uh, this is from a Romanian security journal. And the projected shortfall of cybersecurity skilled professionals is estimated to be 2.5 million in 2025. So there is a demand of about 4 million cybersecurity professionals and uh, you know, uh, uh, shortfall is going likely to be around 2.5 million is what this report is talking about. So there is a huge scope for all of you who are uh, you know, aspiring to uh, reskill, upskill or migrate into cybersecurity. There is a huge opportunity across the industry is the point you have to carry. It's a global survey and you know, of course uh, country specific information I'm going to share uh, towards the end of this as well. So but you know uh, overall, scenario is very good for cybersecurity because many organizations have suffered a breach or an attack or you know, a threat. Uh, so they have not suffered it. They have faced a very close shame, what we call it as an, uh, in form of an attack. And uh, they are putting efforts and uh, you know, uh, solutions and services uh, of cybersecurity professionals are being sought. In a very large scale and a lot of uh, we are seeing we are into the soft business security operations center business our own demands of our services uh, you know for our company services have gone up almost three folds in the last one year so even small enterprises are coming and saying sir uh, you know we had a 46 lakhs loss uh, due to some you know uh, otp uh, scam and you know we fell as a victim so we want to improve our security posture. So can you please come and help us? So that is the way you know, we are seeing a lot of awareness coming across, especially in the small and medium segment of business. Uh, though you get trained for railway cyber security, that doesn't prevent you going across to other industries because the 
you know what are the you know prevention tools or uh, assess predict detect and protect tools what has what has been taught it can, can be applied across many industries so you can uh, consult for uh, you know railway organization at the same time do a consulting for a banking or a financial services company and earn two, two times salaries also that's something which is possible in this field this day so current uh, uh, you know uh, status is uh, as i said you know most of the rail operation focus more on the core functionality and accessibility and uh, the railway sector has given very marginal importance and in ensuring cyber, cyber security is until uh, security breaches are multiplied and uh, the knowledge of such breaches has become public that's what it is a lot of times organizations put uh, the you know incidents under the carpet like you know uh, for every class i prepare myself for 3 to 4 hours and uh, at least on the 3 to 4 hours i spend couple of hours in the dark web where the uh, source of uh, the various kinds of attacks and leakages are very well documented because the hackers come there and claim their success okay so that is where you know you spend the time on so recently uh, about 2 3 months back uh, during one of the advanced uh, security class preparation i came across an incident that a uh, healthcare chain from india which has got 63 points of presence across india uh, suffered a ransomware attack people are waiting to give blood samples the fasting in the early mornings and they were getting a blank screen or a ransomware attack screen and they paid 5 million uh, dollars as a ransom to get the keys out and uh, it was not published it was not publicized they didn't go to the police to report a claim or uh, report the crime uh, it's totally this thing the reason why it has been published in the dark web this the guy who successfully got that 5 million was offering look here i have a source code and a method how to attack a healthcare you pay me 10000 dollars and take this you can become a 5 millionaire that is the way he is projecting it there so we came to know about it only uh, you know uh, in the dark web and it has not been reported anywhere and you know the maybe a big uh, healthcare chain so they must have managed the media uh, they must have managed the government and the police and you know 5 million dollars so they have spent and you know without any proper accounting the ed and the it and all these guys i don't know how they will manage but yeah what i'm saying is uh, unless it comes to public people are not going to be aware of but i think the government has taken this sort of uh, you know uh, incidents into cognizance and now have brought the healthcare sector itself into a critical information infrastructure which mandates every hospital need to have a caso they have to have cyber security you know trained professionals as data protection officers and protect the data they collect right from collection to destruction the entire and data life cycle management uh, systems need to be documented etc has come into force uh, i think you know that's a good sign and uh, i don't think you know railways as in india at least has announced such uh, you know regulations or uh, compliance requirements but i'm sure it will come eventually because there have been incidents which is being suspected even the balaso uh, signal chaos uh, is it a sabotage cyber sabotage is uh, view which the uh, home ministry has been approaching on so there could be many such uh, unknown or unnoticed incidents which is coming up so rail sector is now uh, you know there is a improving security uh, you know is uh, something which the railways has started working like for example uh, you know uh, we are going to have an indian railway sock coming up very soon and we'll talk about it uh, in one of the slides as well so though there are efforts to direction in improving security due to the lack of trained qualified personnel who understand the complexities of railway operation i'm going to be talking about the complexities in the next few slides uh, it has been slow and uh, leading to a lot of vulnerabilities on day that's the current state of cyber security in railways across the globe so it's not only for india uh, maybe it is more in india than you know because we are the one of the very large you know, network rail network operators with a lot of manpower you know, 1.2 million workforce permanently uh, on the roads and equivalent amount of that on the contract and another equivalent amount of the guys in the 
ecosystems of uh, vendors and various other uh, auto wallas, rickshaw wallas, and other things were dependent on the railway system. So around 3.6 to 4 million people are dependent on the Indian railways. So that magnitude uh, may be you know, uh, tough to handle with respect to any of the security features. But yeah, uh, constant effort has started. That's what I could hear. OK, so now uh, why railway specific cyber security is a question. Yeah, general uh, no, IT guys, can they manage uh, no, the railway security? It's a little bit of a concern. Yes, they can. But to what extent is a big question mark because railway operations is very complicated. Like, for example, you know, they comprise of a complex network of OEM components and which has been ages, you know, a lot of legacy systems and, you know, the current latest uh, modern technologies have come in. Uh, like, you know, one day Bharat uh, it doesn't have an engine, it is self-propelled and, you know, various OBUs, onboard uh, units are, you know, synchronized to manage the train movement and other things. So, and, you know, signaling and rail control systems. Earlier, you no, know, I, I can remember 1990s, uh, they used to have the chart on the wallpaper type of things and the section engineer will mark the progress of the train on the paper. And it has all now become a, you know, like what you saw in the picture uh, displays and, you know, alerts automatically in case of anything going wrong or suspected to go wrong. It has given alert and other things. So it is a very complex control systems. Continuous connectivity for communication with central control systems have evolved because uh, the speed, the signal, everything is from the control room is now communicated to the driver directly uh, and, you know, with a lot of sophisticated communication, including the Vande Bharat has a touch screen for the operator to set many things and receive the commands from the control centers. And as I said, like, uh, the physical security systems and elements like CCTVs or platform screen doors that may not be applicable for the regular trains, but in the metros and other things. Yeah, you have a uh, no, whole lot of things to take care and synchronize. Any so small subsystems uh, no, not working can also lead to a uh, train being stopped. That is the complexity of this uh, entire railway system. And, you know, another major problem, like, you know, as I said, we have been working on uh, IR soft project for uh, Indian Railways, the asset visibility and understanding the, you know, uh, what is the priority of the valuable assets, the key risks and the security posture weakness, cyber security threats, regulatory and compliance requirements. And uh, all these things become very uh, weak. Because a lot of times uh, when we take a stock, the, as per the inventory of authorized systems available at one particular location, say suppose 30 desktops, you would always find 36 or 37 desktops. We don't know how to account for the seven. So because it has not been visible. Somebody has kept you know, uh, a system saying, I'll do a parallel operation because I'm not comfortable with the new system. And that has been left there. So, and it is still connected. A whole lot of uh, problems are there and you know uh, visibly you know unless uh, a, a country like india where uh, you know nooks and corners the trains are connected and stations or uh, you know, something like 10000 plus stations uh, have different types of hardware and software and uh, assets distributed across it becomes a nightmare so that's what uh, the complexity so without the visibility and the rail contact the critical operation infrastructure can become vulnerable and unnecessarily uh, you know, exposed to ET, easily mitigable, mitigatable risks can be, you know, it uh, gets vulnerable because that's the uh, reason why uh, this is a very complex thing. And you require that specialized skill, maybe specific cybersecurity experts to manage this. So unique characteristics, the same thing, which I have put it in the better bullet points, uh, safety critical systems, railway network or uh, built with components such as signal rail control systems, they are mission critical ensuring safety of the, of the passengers and cargo. So that is very, very important. Continuous connectivity. Trains rely on continuous connectivity to facilitate the, uh, you know, from the central command systems to signaling equipment to distribution of crucial passenger information and maintaining security uh, is a big, you know, critical uh, issue for real operations. As I said, legacy, so use of old and new technologies can introduce vulnerabilities. Railway-specific cybersecurity compliance is evolving a lot of standards. Uh, especially, you know, uh, in the recent times, the international standards have come in. So the Indian government is trying to adopt many of these things 
for the uh, customize it and localize it and then adopt it is a big challenge and physical security challenge so these are all the unique characteristics of the railway industry which you know makes it complex and the need for cyber security professionals so who is the best it guy to learn the railways or railway guys to learn the it uh, cyber security which is the better one so i think the second option is best because railways is so complex unless you understand or worked on it uh, you would not it's not easy for somebody outsider to pick it up as i said no i've been associated since uh, 1993 but you know still i have you know uh, a gap in many of the things uh, i teach at nair also the training institute at ahmedabad uh, specifically for training and when the interactions i make with the signaling engineers or telecom engineers or the mechanical engineers or rolling stock engineers i learn a lot because they are trying to continuously improve and rdsos you know are putting a lot of pressure on standardization so there are things to learn it's not easy as, as i said i have been associated for 30 years still uh, it's a new thing to me so that is what is uh, continuous evolving of you know technologies and you know whole lot of uh, railway part of the things is stuff to learn so for you to learn cyber security is very easy because you guys are already using the computers and we don't need you know coding or any special technical knowledge to learn cyber security Cyber cyber security. I would I tell all my students is common sense. Okay, you should be alert to the signals and you know the whatever is the you know abnormal behavior which is coming up, and you should be correlating the abnormal event to say, hey, there is something hanky panky going to happen. Let me explore it further and use some tools to check uh, the port scanning or you know the application or the web uh, you know. uh application firewall configuration of network firewall and see if these abnormalities are being you know uh, genuine and you know start working on to prevent or change the port configuration change some rules and make sure that it doesn't affect you so this is the smartness so i i used to tell my students if you are able to download and use whatsapp you can very well use any of these tools because they are so friendly so but you need a lot of correlating power the common sense and relating to the you know uh, linking the various signals or the anomalies or the abnormalities and trying to conclude something is what is the thing and that is what we are going to learn in this course okay so it is very simple uh, you don't need any programming knowledge or you don't need any you know uh, computer science uh, as a you know background to do cyber security and we are going to uh, you know uh, see uh, how the cyber security framework is and there are 70 plus roles you can assume whatever is comfortable to you you can be a network security engineer you can be a malware analyst you can be a security analyst you can be a soc security operation center you know analyst or soc engineer uh, you know monitoring uh, the whole traffic things like that no 70 plus job roles you can be a digital forensics expert you can be a you know uh, uh, what do you say like the web application firewall designer and uh, you know web application secure coding people and you know training is a big area compliance is another area regulations management they are all soft areas but very crucial implementing awareness uh, you know, is very big one so compliance and you know various uh, if suppose you take a iso 27001 you have to document a lot of things so you can be a documentation guy in the cyber security so there are several roles possible and those of you who are you uh, know uh, whatever is your appetite and whatever is your you uh, know area of liking you can go excellent so as i said you know iit madras takes you to the water how much of water do you drink how deep you go into the water is up to you and you take one area of something which you are comfortable with and going deep i'm 100% sure you will get a very good job with a very good you know uh, salary package we're going to see that uh, in the statistics in the subsequent session but you know yeah that's something which you can uh, aspire for that is something which i want to emphasize on a quick look most of you may know those of you are associated with railways uh, the critical systems are we have the trains which is on the bottom the on board we call it as and they have trackside equipment as well as the interlocking and field elements which includes the point signal and other things 
and you know there is an operational control center which you know operation management train control and uh, operator that giving signals and the video walls what you saw there and there are a lot of external systems like you know passenger information system which puts a big displays on which platform what is arrival time delay and other things and also the cctv and scada types of external networks are there this is a typical rail architecture which is common across the world and you know each one of this can be expanded into what is uh, you know there but you know the threats are signaling system traction and train control system passenger information are all potential uh, you know risk uh, carry the cyber risk and railway system which has been considered safe for decades are now con you know compromised with the newly introduced digital commands manipulation of such commands can cause collision as well as other nightmare scenarios and cyber criminals may decide to attack uh, you know the ticketing machines the passenger information displays uh, most of you may know uh, who are in india uh, uh, in patna railway station they have an uh, rdn the railway display network across the platforms to tell the arrival and departure time of various trains the coach positions and coach composition and uh, any of the passenger information systems so somebody hacked into that and played a pornographic video for 5 minutes between 9:56 and 10:01 uh, all the 300 plus displays across the patna junction played a video a pornographic video somebody hacked into the system so these are all some nasty things very embarrassing the children the ladies in you know uh, other vulnerable <laughs> segment of people had to close their eyes and you know uh, so it, it's it can be many things which can happen these are all the threats and you know uh, of course they have sacked the operator they have sacked the rdn service provider and all but that's post facto but you should always be proactive to prevent such threats so that is where this course is going to teach you to assess the threats predict the threat and uh, if you do that you can put you know uh in a system to detect before it happens or during it happens or as soon as it happens and bounce back and protect your ip assets so this is very very proactive a uh, type of you know uh course which which, which is uh, as uh, sumit mentioned we have a very unique hands on uh, where you can actually attack and defend the various uh, kinds of systems and applications and the network including you know configuration of firewalls uh, manipulation uh which you can't do in a live system but you can simulate and learn uh that's something which is there so the same boxes what you saw there expanded little bit uh so you have an authentication on authorization updates and backup added and uh, you have a multi factor authentication with a firewall which is there for the control systems the blue ones are the external systems and uh, the uh, orange ones are the critical systems and this is communication system the pink one which is there so you have you can plan a secure uh you no know, rail network by segmenting your area so in case an attack happens in one of these systems say sock which is an op uh, optional one but you know in case of anything which is going wrong in this firewall it is contained within whatever is connected to the third party you know external system it doesn't affect the rest of the operation so network segmentation is one of the techniques to prevent uh the you no know, propagation of the threats across the network so we have several methods we are going to teach you and the sock security operation center which i mentioned is uh, latest one which is getting added which is a very good sign because it can give you a lot of uh, insight uh, before an attack or before an incident we call an attack or a compromise as an incident before it happens you can be prepared and you know uh, solve that uh, or prevent that or protect your it system so this is something which uh, you know is a depiction of a segmented network it can be orchestrated in a very different manner uh, depending on what is the requirement of the organization the railways uh, which part of the railways you are working for and other things but this is a broad idea one of the idea for securing the railway network is segmentation that's what i want to discuss so there are you know big risk uh, with respect to vulnerabilities uh, which is essentially uh, you know uh, the external networks get connected to the critical systems today in the latest uh, types of uh, you know uh, deployments 
uh, like the metros and you know the one day Bharat type of things. There is a Wi Fi, free Wi Fi given to the public, and you know there is a passenger information system which tells the where is the train currently and what speed at which it is moving. All these things is wirelessly connected. And even the engine, o OBU, the onboard unit uh, for uh, you know, various types of points, transponder and other things, the uh, uh, controllers. As I said, Vande Bharat is, doesn't have an engine, so it is distributed. So there are uh, something like you know, many OBUs which need to be synchronized for the train to move. And it receives the uh, train controls and you know the various other communications through wireless. And somebody uh, can play a uh, power. Uh, uh, no? using the communication. So this is a big risk uh, to the external network. That's what we have put in the red line there. And increasing number of sensors allowing interlocking and related system to receive far more data than traditional systems is also you know, a lot of data get, getting in there. So you don't know which is the genuine one, which is the this thing. So one of the things which is possible there is, uh, uh, no, a derailment attack vector. Suppose the train is supposed to move at 60 kilometers in uh, one of the regions. I can give a malicious movement authority on the display to the driver to move at 80, and it can create a derailment. So somebody can hack the radio block of the center, which is connected to the GSMR, which is being used to communicate to the driver from the control room, can hack an RBC and give a wrong uh, speed direction, or uh, where he has to slow down, it says, no, go at a higher speed. Those sort of things, hacks are possible there. And it has happened in a couple of uh, European countries where you know, uh, somebody has been ordered to go at 300 kilometer speed, but the driver had a sense. You know, no such thing doesn't happen. So he communicated through the voice to the controller and said, why are you giving 300 kilometers when the, I'm going at uh, 165? So he said, no, that's not been given by me. So then they stopped and you know, explored about it. But uh, it's very easy to hack uh, communication and especially the GSM is not a very uh, is a secured uh, way of uh, handling the communications. So there could be vulnerability which is coming in there. So this is all typically something which can happen, which has happened, and which can be prevented if you have a good monitoring and security operation center type of operations which is there. So the, the, the complexities, as you could see, external systems, control centers, SOC, and the basic, you know, uh, rail movement, the side track uh, systems and the interlocking systems and the whole lot of, uh, you know, signaling and the communications, all of them are vulnerable. And uh, the, the security has never been considered when they were designed because they are all, most of them are legacy systems. Like in Indian railways were set up by the Britishers. And, you know, we are still carrying forward many of the technologies uh, of course, we have improved, like, you know, what we had a, a PC has been replaced with a server and, you know, other things have happened. But, you know, core of the operation part and the core of communication part has not changed. So this leads to a lot of vulnerabilities. And there is a huge scope for cybersecurity uh, ways to protect these systems. That is what is the message you have to carry forward from this. So what are the possible solutions? As cyber attacks are becoming increasingly sophisticated, railway needs to implement a proactive Proactive rather than reactive security practices. That's what I uh, mentioned. Proactive is very, very important. While preventive security is capable of knowing signature threats and the threat monitoring is required to identify more sophisticated threats or the zero-day hacks, which many of them uh, you know, may be not uh, known for the signature and they evade these controls. So effective cyber security solution for railway systems should provide real-time alerts, constant monitoring, offering rail operators the full visibility into their system and the ability to address the potential threats quickly. And continuous threat detection must be complemented with actionable insights, allowing rail operators who are not necessarily the native speakers of cybersecurity. So there are you know, uh, operational people who don't understand IT or security, but they can be given an alert with the yellow signal or a red signal or a vibration or a voice command type of thing. So you need to implement such systems which make all of them participate in the security. So the need of the hours, trained railway systems aware cyber security professionals and not many in the market, upskilling, reskilling efforts by railway ecosystem lacks the volumes needed to address the security of uh, specific cyber security. As I was saying about IRSOC, see the complexities. We have 1,76,000 plus 
endpoints. And we have over 34,000 servers and almost like you know, uh, 18,000 plus switches, L2, L3 switches. So the complexity is enormous. And uh, as I said, the, they don't have a proper inventory. If they had a proper you know, inventory of all these items, it's very easy to configure, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, like a sensor into the SOC you know, network. And you know. so the complexity and many of them, the many of the SCADA uh, and the signaling systems are you know, uh, running on uh, Windows 2000, outdated uh, you know, operating system, outdated PCs. Which still are being maintained at a very high cost because they don't know how to replace them. And the cost of replacement uh, is you know very high or sometimes it is such a critical operation that you know they cannot even afford a five minutes downtime so that is a sort of complexity which is there and it i'm not saying it cannot be addressed but requires somebody who has a real uh, ecosystem knowledge with the cyber security skills to overcome this that's the uh, complexity which i'm talking about but it's a, indeed a very good effort from the railway board to set up a ir soc which is indian railway soc you will find a, very soon, an RFP coming out for the you know, various companies to participate and give a solution. But uh, they are opting for uh, mostly SOC as a service. And uh, not many vendors are there, uh, which is offering the SOC as a service, but they want to sell their product. So there is a huge conflict which is going on within the Indian Railways and the Railway Board, which way to go. But eventually, it will come, which is a very good sign for Indian Railways addressing the cyber security problems of the railway sector. Okay. So we are at eight o'clock. As Sumit said, we'll take a yes. five minute break yes. and come back. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, after the break, uh, Professor Mohan Ram has planned uh, an overview of the simulation based learning, uh, which he'll be demonstrating right after the uh, break. So in the meantime, uh, I would be, uh, sharing a uh, few details about our program. So, uh, so first uh, I would, uh, I would request you to, uh, so I think, uh, I hope you are able to see this uh, brochure of the program that we have. So, I suggest you do this at the end of the... Sure, sir, sure. I can do that. Uh, sure. That's what we have planned. So yeah. Go for a bio break for five minutes and come back. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Sir, so you can. You, sir, so uh, all the people who would like to take up a break, please, uh, we'll connect. Uh, it's 803. We'll connect at 805. So what we have done is with uh, IIT Madras has been running a course called Certified Cyber Warrior. It's a 360 degree perspective with latest tools and techniques to uh, know, understand the threat perspective. It's 120 hours focus training and 70% of the duration is hands-on. And uh, we've done successfully seven batches already and uh, trained a lot of working professionals of the banks, uh, government, and uh, the defense, and uh, various other organizations. And uh, the unique uh, cyber bay is a virtual environment to create that attack. And uh, now uh, we are combining the key modules of Cyber Warrior and blend it with the railway systems, basic systems of railway environment, uh, into this course, which is a postgraduate certification course, which uh, Sumit will explain at the end of my presentation. So a lot of uh, cyber warrior and uh, this course uh, 
uh, no, uh, we'll have a commonality of the sessions and uh, no, the boot camp will also be common there. So this is the perspective of it. So now I would request uh, Shrutakirti to take uh, charge and present uh, the cyber way, uh, a quick walkthrough so that uh, you understand how the simulation environment is. So normally there will be a storyboard that is, you know, money lost uh, ten thousand dollars or ten thousand rupees uh, through this method, and you have the logs is there. So analyze where uh, you know uh, the money went or whatever it is. That could be a case study uh, storyboard will be there. So you will pick up the tools and load it, and then do an analysis and submit. Uh, what was the destination where the money went? So things like that. This is what the cyber way is all about. So you cannot take a live website and do an attack because if they go to a police complaint, you'll get arrested. So there is an attack, uh, cross script error, reading in errors, you know, login errors, uh, exception errors. All these things you can uh, you know, uh, attack and uh, you know, defend it also. That is the way the cyber way is structured. Over to you, Shrutakirti. I'm stopping the screen share. Once she completes, I'll come and uh, summarize and then we'll move on. Yeah, thank you so much. Hi, I'm uh, Shruti Kirti. Good evening to all of you. Hope I'm audible. Uh, let me just quickly share our screen. Um, as Professor Mohan Ram was explaining, we have designed this cloud-based virtual learning environment where you can practice um, tools that you're going to be learning related to cybersecurity in an ethical manner. And um, let me just share my screen to give you an idea about what this Cyber Bay is going to look like. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Great. So this is our cyber bay where we have a list of various incidents related to different topics. So all of the topics that you'll be learning throughout the duration of the course related to um, information security, network security, application security, forensics, cryptography, um, uh, offensive security. You will have various incidents put up in this lab. Uh, this is, of course, the demo lab. The actual lab will have over 100 different incidents across different topics. And this is how each of the incidents are structured. So basically, there will be a storyboard. We will give a situation for every single tool that you have to practice. And it's easier to follow a storyline. So in this storyboard, you will see that there is a student who's pursuing his final year cybersecurity degree and has um, uh, he has to do an investigation um, by going through a victim's missions image. So a real-time case is being analyzed here. And these are the tools. It, it gives you the purpose of what the investigation is all about, where you have to analyze multi-user cases, do timeline analysis. And this specific case is for one specific tool using a specific software called Autopsy, for example. And they are going to be doing an image analysis. And we have the screenshots of every single step of the way that you need to practice on our virtual lab. So the solution is also mentioned here. You don't have to download any external software you don't have to download any specific tools. It has all been already stored and uploaded onto our cloud-based virtual learning environment. So you just need to pick out the tools from our repository or the catalog of tools that we have and follow this step-by-step. Step. So step-by-step, step, we have also the, you can see the text as well as the screenshots from the actual screen that you're going to be seeing when you're practicing every single tool. And every single 
incident will have an objective, vulnerability objective, and what you're supposed to expect as an outcome. So you'll see the screenshots for every single step that you need to practice to get a specific end result. So Autopsy is a platform for digital forensics tools. So this is a forensic tool related incident. There's also something called ZenMap, for example. This is, again, another storyboard that you have. ZenMap, um, basically, it's for mapping your network and checking for vulnerabilities. You just key in your IP address and figure out what vulnerabilities are there in your network. So this is a network security related tool. And of course, if you're practicing externally outside of the lab, we'll give you the right links where you can explore the software. But again, as I said, within our lab, you need not download anything. It's already the updated versions of every single software are already updated into our catalog, into our repository. And you'll find step by step how to analyze and use the tool. So Nmap, uh, you can, you'll also have the technical objective mentioned here. So what all it can be used for port scanning, Wi-Fi scanning, IP address scanning, and um, it, we give you the objective, the steps, and the conclusion so you can match with what you're doing. And there'll be like demo websites and case studies that we attach as links that you need to log in within the virtual lab. So you will get these instructions and you just need to follow it step by step to get a result. And you will get 30 hours of lab to practice all of these tools that we are going to be teaching uh, throughout the course. For example, this is one IP address that is what we are going to be using to check for vulnerabilities. So similarly, there are many other incidents. There are different, different incidents and different, different tools. Social engineering, for example, is one of the biggest issues when it comes to cybersecurity these days, there's lots of phishing happening. Um, and this is a tool that you can, you will learn within what we call the Kali Linux. You might have heard of Kali Linux. We can carry out exploits ethically within this specific learning environment. That is the um, motive with which this lab has been designed. And each of you will get your individual credentials and lab credits as in 30 hours will be allotted to you. And uh, our teachers, our technical team members, and our faculty will also be guiding you on how to undertake each of these tools and what it can be used for and how it can be applied to your specific stream. And if there's something, like if there's a specific tool that you would like to explore more, you can also connect with our team one-on-one -on -one to understand how to deep dive into that specific topic or a tool that you want to practice. So we, we'll also have like a weekly once a doubt clarification session of sorts. So in case if you're having any issues with the cyber lab or learning the tools, you'll be guided by our experts and professors. So this is how the cyber bay looks like. Yeah, thanks to the KP. Uh, any questions, uh, participants? Uh, yes, a lot of questions are there in the chat. So I'll take them up. Uh, so before, uh, so sir, are there any other slides that we need to take yeah, up? Yeah, I'm going to continue. Maybe let's finish the presentation and then we'll take up questions. Yeah. There are, I think, five or six slides to conclude the job opportunity scenarios across the globe. So, yeah. <clears throat> So that was a quick look or a walkthrough of the Cyber Bay, which is a very unique value proposition. There is no course across the globe, uh, whichever is the standard ones like SANS and uh, uh, CEH type of courses where there is uh, Cyber Bay offered as part of the course. Here, no, you are learning about uh, threat and uh, uh, how to assess, predict and detect the threat and how to protect using set of tools, how they are interrelated, all these things you are applying in the hands-on so that you don't forget about it and you know you can use it uh, very productively uh, and most of them are open source tools uh, or very little payment uh, you know enable the tools uh, on a subscription model on a need basis you can use one one time or multiple times by paying that so this is a very economical way to protect your organization is what we have put uh, as part of the curriculum so the as i said in the beginning uh, Although you are going to be trained to railway specific cybersecurity, 
the communication standards of uh, wired communication, wireless communication, uh, data uh, movement across the network, the land land management and the server management, application management, network management. All these things are common across the multiple other domains as well. So you can, in case you know uh, you find a job in the banking sector is more lucrative than what you have in the railway sector, you can move because there is no stoppage for you because you have learned the fundamentals of cyber security and application methodologies and uh, some tools as well. So you can present yourself. And uh, so I just want to present the worldwide demand. Uh, so generally the framework is identify, protect, detect, respond and recover or the you know, steps which is uh, followed. And it is also color coded like you know what is uh, presented here. So there are different kinds of cybersecurity framework. NAST follows this uh, five steps. So uh, it's a very, very uh, important uh, you know, way for you to understand, identify, protect, detect, and respond, and recover. Because you cannot say that, you know, I am 100% safe, nobody will attack me. There is likely chance of getting attacked, but you should be able to bounce back or recover very fast. So how do we do that? That's what is the whole thing about. And, you know, the coolest carrier, you can see the new, new terms are coming, threat hunters, and uh, purple team, uh, malware analysts, and uh, you know, uh, blue team, uh, red team, uh, security architect and engineers. So there are, as I said, 70 plus job roles like this, which is there. And you know, you can also see the ICSOT, uh, security assessment consultants, and you know, intrusion detection SOC analyst, and you know, a whole lot of job opportunities are there. This is a live scenario. I put the link as well in the bottom. You can uh, go through that. And uh, this is. As of today in the morning, the American uh, job market, you can see that there are total uh, cyber security job openings is uh, 3,48,975. And total already employed is uh, around 7,78,402. And uh, what type of uh, jobs are there? Security analyst, specialist, security, cyber security engineer, auditor, network engineer, architect, software developer engineer system engineer, system administrator, information assurance engineer, analyst, risk analyst. So there are types of jobs and you know there are across, you can see there, of course, there are in the northern side, there are a few packets which is empty or very low. But in the, you come down to Florida and uh, California as well as in New York, there are so many jobs available there. Just to give you a confidence that, you know, whatever is the investment you are making is not going to be uh, you know, if your railway organization is not going to be going forward very quickly on the cyber security, you can still move to other sectors and make your money. So even in the Indian market, it's booming. As per the NASCOM's recent report, cyber security market is projected to go to 35 billion by 2025, Indian market. Uh, so currently more than 30,000 cyber security jobs are available in the country, says the HR experts. Uh, job portal indeed is one of the portals uh, reported a jump of 150 percent cyber security job within one year and global in house centers uh, various uh, consulting organizations like deloitte and uh, accentures they have a very focused practice for cyber security professionals and the salary range is you uh, know for around two years experience uh, it's around 15 lakh per annum and uh, according to the industry experts they say the professionals with Two to three years experience, it jumps to 20 lakhs. And with five to eight years, it is around 35 to 40 lakhs. So this is your overall experience. With the cyber security certification from IIT, you are eligible to you know, go in the lateral entry to a, if you are an eight-year experienced IT guy with the IIT Madras certificate, you, it's very likely that you can get a 35 to 40 lakh job uh, in a, you know, a Deloitte or Accenture or IBM or McAfee or all these uh, global in-house centers, which is focused on doing the cyber security support across the globe based out of India, you have a huge job opportunity there as well. So it is now uh, time for Sumit to take over and you, uh, run the cyber security highlights, which uh, sure. I'll stop here and wait for the questions to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, there are two aspects to our course program, which I would like to highlight today. Uh, so the first one that I would like to highlight today is, uh, so we have created a, a detailed brochure about this course program. So uh, we have not been able to explain the various sessions and topics we are covering in our program, but I'll quickly take you through what we are trying to cover. So straight away, I'll go to the, uh, 
So I'll I'll straight away go to the pages. Uh, so this is the overall uh, contour of the program that we have. So as you can see, this entire course program has been, uh, so there are 80 hours in which we have uh, created around 38 sessions. So each session is usually uh, a topic covered in two to four hours. So some of the topics like physical security and importance in CS has been covered in four topics, uh, four, uh, four hours. So this is the hourly breakup of these 38 topics, which you can uh, study in our brochure. I'll tell you how to download the brochure and study it in detail. The brochure not only talks about the hourly allocation of these 38 uh, topics. So we, uh, the unique part about this program is that uh, around 30 to 35 hours has been uh, dedicated to uh, rail cybersecurity topics. Uh, for example, uh, you'd be covering control and signaling systems, rail communication networks, uh, maintenance and asset management, uh, then we are talking about infrastructure and facilities. We are talking about, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, incident management. We're talking about freight and cargo management. We're talking about uh, control centers. Uh, we're talking about disaster recoveries and recovery and business continuity, regulatory comp compliances for railway perspective. So see those, these are some unique additions that we have added to this uh, cybersecurity program, which as uh, Professor Mohan Ram talked about, this is one course which will not only give you a specialized uh, knowledge about rail cybersecurity, but will also prepare you for cybersecurity across different uh, sectors and different domains as well. So your investment into this course uh, will not go waste if you are not able to crack an opportunity in rail cybersecurity. So this knowledge will help you in uh, moving or exploring any opportunity around cybersecurity for future. So as uh, Professor Mohan Ram talked about, there are a lot of consulting companies which are setting up practices in cybersecurity and these practices uh, would be uh, domain or sector specific. You can uh, explore your career opportunities there as well. So in addition to this 80 hours, uh, there will be a 30 hours of uh, cyber range, uh, cyber bay access that will be provided to you, which Shrutkriti explained. Uh, in addition to that, we'll also be having some doubt clearing sessions. Uh, uh, so around 110, 10 to 120 hours of interaction is there. So if you go through our brochure, you will come across what we are covering in each session. So there is a detailed uh, uh, topic wise uh, description we have given for each of the sections we are covering so that, so that there is no surprise at your end or there is no uncertainty at your end that what are you signing in for so it is it also covers that in what in which session you are we'll be covering which tools for example digital forensics we are covering autopsy ftk major cane bulk extractor deft explico plain sight x-ray forensic and gas so all, even the tools are mentioned uh, session wise that what all tools we'll be covering uh, in the course program. So I would encourage you to please download this particular brochure and study it and take up a decision on uh, this course program. So first and foremost, uh, uh, I would talk about that uh, this is open to uh, all the graduates who are looking at uh, uh, building a career in cybersecurity or rail cybersecurity. Uh, in terms of the pedagogy, this will be a, a live classes conducted online, uh, delivered by uh, faculties from IIT Madras uh, and railway experts. So Railway Academy would be bringing in railway experts to uh, delve into uh, deep into the railway aspects of uh, cybersecurity. All of you will be getting an access to uh, CyberBay, which is the simulation simulation based learning environment. And uh, there will be a certification from uh, IIT Madras Pravartak uh, given to you after the course completion. There will be periodic evaluations uh, which have been built in this program, maybe in the form of quiz assignments or some subjective assessments as we uh, as found relevant. Uh, you'll have to maintain 70% attendance in the uh, lectures and uh, there would be a three days on campus 
boot camp at iit madras but for foreign students who will be enrolling into the program uh, uh, this is not mandatory so you can attend the boot camp uh, online as well uh, participants who will satisfy the attendance criteria and the evaluation criteria would be awarded the certification and uh, these are the faculties that we have uh, as uh, uh, professor mohan ram talked about professor kamakoti who is an eminent uh, uh, national advisor on cyber security programs with government of india and has been a mentor to this program uh, uh, yp rao who is a, a, a deputy chief signal and telecom engineer uh, who will be taking up uh, topics along with some other railway experts from our side uh, professor noor mohammed uh, who is teaching at triple iit kanchipuram professor harish ramani who is teaching at triple uh, iit dm uh, kanchipuram so they will all be actually uh, taking up various sessions in this particular program so uh, in addition to this uh, i think i i would encourage you to please uh, uh, download the brochure on the website i'll share the website link and uh, where you could download the brochure classes would be will be held twice a week on saturdays and sundays so we've designed the class delivery to suit working professionals uh, 10 am to 12 pm you can attend the classes uh, the application process is uh, you'll have to uh, register for the course program after the registration you will have to submit an application form uh, to iit madras pravartak uh, based upon your application which would contain your academic qualification your current work experience based upon your application form uh, submission they will issue you an offer letter after the offer letter is issued you can submit the uh, fees uh, fees can be given in three installments also so i would uh, encourage classes we are looking at we planning to have the orientation session on 25th classes would commence one week after the orientation session so uh, as far as the fees is concerned the fees for indian students is 1 lakh plus gst and usd 21000 2100 for for international students uh you can pay the fees in three installments uh 30 uh, inr 30000 as first installment 35000 second and 35000 third installment within 30 and within the first 90 days you need to make the payments uh there are education if you are seeking education loan we have loan partners uh, who can offer you an education loan to do this course program whose emis could be as low as 9000 rupees for 11 months or you can extend the duration also depending upon your eligibility with the loan partner so now uh, i'll move on to taking questions with uh, uh, professor mohan ram and we also have mr kulkarni uh, who is an industry expert uh from rail industry so i'll start with the questions so uh, i would welcome uh, uh, mr kulkarni uh, to this webinar and i thank you for uh, thank you uh, i would thank him for taking out his precious time to uh, guide our participants today welcome sir yeah, thanks uh, thanks uh, sumit uh, i mean uh, thanks mohan for the uh, uh, session i mean it was uh, very informative and exhaustive okay so i think uh, we could uh, take up the questions uh, soon right sir so uh, i think i, I will uh, i we have a lot of questions here uh, in the chat box so i'll go to the top where we've started getting the questions uh, i think uh, let me just take up the questions please Yes. Okay. Uh, just a second. Let me just open the chat. It's not. okay so uh i'll take first question as uh, from okay michael has asked a particular question a lot of systems provide for rail developing their software including uh, uh, using linux uh 
I think some system provider said that their system, there is no need to install security system since it is Linux. If the operating system is like, so I think the, if I'm understanding the question correctly, Michael is asking if the operating system is Linux, there is no need to install security system is sir. Would you like to, uh, offer a comment? I think we know the answer, but still, if you could just answer it, that will. Uh, no, I think you know operating system is only one layer of the information systems. There are several vulnerabilities which can come in there uh, across uh, you know, the application layer or the transportation layer, the network layer, and uh, other things. So OS is only one small part of it, and yeah, uh, like unlike the Windows system, which requires the hardening, uh, Linux you don't need any special patches and uh, this thing. Uh, but that's the only difference. But that's a uh, very small component of the seven layers of information system. So you need still a lot of tools and uh, you know, to assess the threats and across the other layers. And uh, yeah, Linux may not need the OS hardening, but even in Linux, there have been some vulnerabilities which has been reported. Uh, exploits have been reported, uh, reported because Linux is an open source, so not many people can support such security threats. That's the reason why the patches don't come. But uh, specifically, when there have been an exploit, uh, somebody who has suffered a breach has put a note, and some people have come to a help uh, with that. So those uh, specific cases where the ports have been left open and other things uh, due to other layers of information systems which affected the operating system as well. But you know, yeah, there is uh, no guarantee that you know. If the application runs out of Linux, it will not be attacked. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So there is one question I would like to ask um, uh, Mr. Kulkarni here. Is that uh, from an, uh, as we saw presentation of Professor Mohan Ram, we saw that uh, from an industry uh, perspective, uh, how is real cybersecurity different from generic cybersecurity? Something uh, Professor Mohan Ram talked about. So, now, when we are actually talking to a lot of prospective candidates who are willing to enroll into the program, we are finding mm. uh, two sets of people. One is mm. uh, rail professionals looking at diversifying or explore, uh, growing their career in rail cybersecurity. And there are IT professionals who are looking for uh, uh, looking at rail cybersecurity as a specialization. So both of them have got apprehension. So I would request you to kindly throw some light on this. Uh, how yeah. should uh, a rail professional be looking at rail cybersecurity and how should a, a, an IT professional be looking at rail cybersecurity, sir? Yeah, I mean, uh, that is a very, uh, I mean, very, these days it's a very common uh, concern. I mean, how is, uh, what is the striking difference between the IT cybersecurity and uh, railway cybersecurity? So, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, put it in one line, I mean, uh, the safety is the driver in the railway cybersecurity. For anybody in the IT cybersecurity, I mean, the concern is about the brand reputation and the monetary losses. Other than that, I mean, there is uh, there is uh, there is nothing much of the impact. I mean, if there is any any breaches or any, uh, I mean, untoward incidents happen, but uh, when you see it from the railway industry or the OT industry, so you have the safety that is very critical. I mean, if it stands uh, above this. Uh, uh, brand and the uh, uh, monetary uh, loss. So the uh, safety of the lives, safety of the goods, I mean, that accounts for everything. I mean, that itself is the driver for for the for the railway cyber security professional, I mean, uh, to take up the uh, uh, skill set. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, so another point which I would like to ask you, sir, how companies like Alstom, Thales, Siemens are looking at rail cybersecurity as a market in coming years? Yeah, I think uh, uh, that is a very, uh, I mean, a niche uh, as uh, Mohan Ram uh, mentioned in his uh, session. So what happens is, uh, I mean, uh, the OT cybersecurity is, uh, I mean, is a complex one. So it takes the, uh, I mean, the rail industry cybersecurity is a complex one because it involves the IT cybersecurity plus the OT cybersecurity. So in the OT, what are we concerned about? I mean, we only have about um, the regular uh, information system components like switches, firewalls, I mean, the OSs. So in the OT, there is an OEM equipment, there's a safety devices. I mean, how do we ensure the cybersecurity 
on the functionalities of all these zip footprints, which are part of the, the subsystems in the in, in the uh, railway railway domain. There are multiple subsystems uh, in the uh, railway domain, which are uh, which are uh, I mean to name a few, it, it would be uh, automatic train supervision or automatic train control. I mean there could be a, a maintenance subsystem. So all of them have their own functionalities uh, to coordinate uh, um, for the functionality of the cyber, I mean, for the functionality of the railway. But to ensure that they are not tampered or they are not uh, attacked, so there is a cyber security cap on top of that. So this is not just spanning only the IT equipments, it spans on the OT equipments also. So it is a, it, it, it has a larger presence beyond the IT. So I would say OT is, is, is a, I mean, uh, IT is a subset of the OT, OT cybersecurity. Thank you, sir. So one question that we are uh, constantly getting uh, from our uh, community of rail professionals who are having almost about five, seven or 10 years of work -ics. is learning rail cybersecurity a wise move for a working professional in railways with more than 10 plus years of experience? And, and if he invests his time, energy, money into this learning cybersecurity or rail cybersecurity, what is the kind of opportunity that can unfold for uh, experienced professionals who are having upwards of uh, seven to 10 years of experience? So as I said, uh, you know, uh, the railway board under the uh, leadership of uh, Mr. Ashwin Vaishnav is a very educated uh, has been an IAS officer and uh, very leading uh, private sector you know, leader uh, in Siemens, GE, and all. A Wharton graduate has taken you know, railway security, uh, the cyber security uh, in Indian railways very seriously. That's the reason why uh, 160 crore project for IRSOC is under discussion. So I think you know there are going to be at multiple layers this uh, the ripple effect of the security is going to come into the Indian railways uh, especially. Uh, so there are going to be a lot of opportunities for uh, guys who have a knowledge on cyber security to move into that role in their respective department as a cyber security coordinator or cyber security uh, specialist or an analyst type of roles will come up. And uh, of course, you know the overseas opportunities and and outside railways opportunities are also there for them to explore. But within the railways, I see that you know, in the next two, three years, uh, with the serious efforts being uh, put under the direction of our Honorable Minister, uh, there is going to be a huge cybersecurity movement, which is going to happen across all the rail organizations, not only the Indian railways, they are supported PSUs, and everyone is see keenly, you know, uh, Railtel and other uh, people are also uh, keenly considering cyber security in a very big way and seriously putting efforts on training, awareness, and uh, trying to you know assess where they are standing with respect to security. Uh, before the minister asks, they want to preempt by asking for an assessment or a vulnerability report, etc. are happening. So there is a huge role uh, uh, across, uh, you know, as I said, uh, as Mr. Kulkarni pointed out, the OT uh, areas is not for uh, regular IT guys, but it's a very complex system, the signaling and the communication. And somebody had asked about the communication uh, systems and, you know, uh, they are standards, they are, uh, whether it is railways or, you know, any other IT system, the communication standards is TCP, IP and, you know, the serial bus communication or wireless communication uh, and other things are uh, very common. And they are all susceptible to man-in-the-middle attacks and uh, the you know, uh, rogue networks uh, attacks and other things. So you need to detect and uh, prevent such attacks is a huge challenge and uh, will require expertise which uh, you will learn across this course. Thank you, sir. So one question Aditya is asking is that is programming knowledge an imperative for this uh, course program? I had told in the presentation itself, if you are able to install download and install whatsapp uh, you can you, you know there is no programming requirement uh, there is no go going to be any programmer of course you will have some access control list uh, acl based you know commands to go into the linux to see various kinds of uh, improving the security parameters within the uh, linux systems to improve uh, but that's uh, there is a standard booklet available on the possible security commands for linux uh, which people need to uh, can refer 
they need not buy half. So there is no programming requirement at all. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, I'll take up, uh, I think Himanshu, we've already answered this question about uh, how, how Indian Railways is uh, prioritizing rail cybersecurity. Uh, James has asked a question, so can you briefly uh, talk about cybersecurity from a signaling perspective in CBTC application? I think one of our, uh, so sir, if you'd like, uh, uh, Mr. Kulkarni or Mohan Ram would like to take up this question or. Yeah, Mr. Kulkarni, you want to answer? Or... Yeah, oh, so what, what was the question, uh, Sumit? Uh, no, the signaling and communication as well as the CBTC uh, based uh, control systems. Uh, what is the implications of cybersecurity? Yeah, uh, so uh, I mean, uh, when we see the communications between the um, onboard equipment and the track side equipment, so uh, there's a lot of communications uh, that happen. I mean, every um, every every block, I mean, every time the, the 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 railway passes, so there is a communication to the track side uh, equipment. So for all of these, there has been, I mean, the authentication that happen. So I mean, uh, how does the I mean, how do we ensure that uh, the authentications are are real, genuine ones? So the cybersecurity ensures the secure logins by providing the certificates. I mean, the certificates are are installed either the self signed or the uh, PKI. So these will ensure the the communications are cyber secured between the. Uh, track side and the onboard equipments. So this is essential communication that happens between the uh, onboard and to the track side, and then it flows to the command center also via the wired networks. Okay, yeah, thank you. To just complement uh, what we said, uh, like no CBTC, for example, communication-based uh, train controls. Uh, somebody can actually manipulate the uh, you know, communication. Uh, it's very easy. To do a man in the middle attack, unless you are putting the preventive systems like Mr. Krupen, you mentioned about you know handling it with a good uh, key management, the encryption, and you know uh, the packet management and uh, uh, prevention of eavesdropping type of techniques. What you are going to learn, uh, so uh, it is very crucial from the command and control centers or the control center to signaling and interlocking and the you know uh, track side uh, systems communications are not manipulated. And uh, so with a uh, no, whole lot of uh, security which is required there, there is a huge role for improvement there. So that is what uh, the, it's not been done uh, in the because of the legacy systems, what is there in our system, uh, in our uh, railways. Uh, but you know, people are trying to look at uh, you know, various kinds of tools and techniques to prevent such attacks. Okay, thank you, sir. So we also have, uh, uh... Uh, our rail expert who will be taking up a few sessions in this course program, uh, Mr. Darshan. Darshan, sir, could you please unmute and take up some of the uh, domain-specific questions as well, please? Uh, sure, sir. Thank you. Now, let me add uh, that uh, the communication-based train control system where the cyber security plays the role, where from the ground side, the movement authority in the form of packets is being uh, uh, it's communicated to the onboard system. Based on that, uh, each individual trains, they calculate the braking curves and also they maintain themselves the headways. So if anybody attacks there, then that totally it, uh, interrupts the, uh, the movements of the train and they're very, okay, uh, I mean, uh, the impact of the disaster can cannot be, okay, I see, uh, it cannot be imagined. So here exactly I want to emphasize that uh, Till the time that's the uh, uh, encrypted communication is okay. But uh, now uh, course-wise we go very detailed. The threats also there is from internal, those who are having access. So we are going to deal this one very systematically. Though the complete admin, okay, the, are the internal also, where the movement authority is the part of the onboard system, where that's in a fraction of seconds, okay? So continuously that is to be updated a right information to move the all the trains in the region, region of uh, the communication based very safely. So till the time they are uh, localized, like uh, someone pointed out like a line X, 
uh, at the time there is no issues uh, but recently there was a seminar conducted at delhi of uh, irse where now data is supposed to be taken to a central place the cold storage and from there that is to be accessed there uh, how much okay iot are there uh, the advantages at the same time the threat also equally there so i hope that uh, uh, the security measures are very very okay important and just now we have discussed here about the indian railways but right now i can also add there like uh, 40 places okay our cities are now going to get a metro system they are going to work on very advanced okay the communication based train control systems now also we have also having a dedicated freight corridor that's also etcs level 1 and apart from that, again, we have got a opportunities uh, of cyber security, especially in case of high speed rails. And also at uh, Northern Zone, okay, NCRTC, there is a ETCS level two okay, system has been deployed. And uh, also nowadays, uh, just now we have seen that uh, operational control center is the state of art of controlling a modern signaling. So there the advantages are there. But at the same time, that is equally to be protected from the cyber security. I think I have gone through the uh, so many queries in a, uh, our chat box uh, to cover all this. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sir, thank please, you. yeah, you go ahead. Right. Sir, there are a couple of questions, uh, Mohan Ram, sir, and Shruti Kriti, ma'am, uh, which people are asking. But before that, sir, uh, Keshav has asked that how much relevance of this course is to standard? Uh, TS50701, if you would like to, if any one of our experts would like to take up this particular question. Standards, without standards, not even the one byte can move across the communication network. So it is right. evolving. Uh, so TS5701 is now getting replaced with uh, something called the IEC uh, code, which is, I think, for the I think IEC 6243. Yeah. Uh, six three four five two yeah six six three four five two it is uh, getting uh into the thing so yeah it will i don't think you know uh, uh it has been implemented across uh, multiple levels of railway organization in india but as i said you know there is a movement uh, in a positive way and eventually uh, i think i see six three four five two will get implemented and uh, that will become the worldwide standard that's what is predicted of course the americans have put their own tsa uh, standards very recently and uh, americans always stay on their own way so, okay that's... sir uh there is a question which uh on behalf of iit madras i would like you to take shim one is asking why there is different rates for indian and foreign candidates so uh, yeah that's a very good uh thing it's in terms of uh affordability and uh, you know, uh, we want more and more Indians to you know, dominate this field and grow globally. And uh, I think you know, the, it's been a suppose you take a SANS type of course for the similar nature, it's at least seven to seven and a half lakhs. That's the price point you know, of uh, bootcamp style uh, uh, introduction to cybersecurity, not sector specific. That's a basic. Cyber security course itself is going to cost you seven lakhs, and IIT Madras uh, knows about the Indian students' aspirations and Indian working professionals are you know uh, compared to the global market is uh, you know uh, cannot afford such prices. That's the reason why uh, we have priced it uh, lower for the Indians and uh, foreigners. Yeah, it's uh, still compared to you know, seven thousand or eight thousand dollars. It's two thousand one hundred. It's not a big deal. That's a big surprise. Okay. I think, sir, I think more or less we have covered all the questions. So there, there are many uh, overlaps in the questions. So I would not be taking them individually. Uh, okay. This is a good question from Bhaskar Sharma. Already all the signaling systems are cell four, but we need, we still need cybersecurity. Why? Yeah, I think he answered it, uh, sir. You can... No, thing is that uh, the cell four is something. Uh, it is in connection with some system working, whereas the data once it is moving from one point to other point, the data transmission where the threat is coming, 
So while okay, the data is being transmitted or the received, so there the authenticity and the encryption is required. So that's why this is an add-on. Okay. Uh, Kulkarni, sir, would you like to add something to it? I think that was, uh, I mean, that is what the Shin mentioned. I yeah. think uh, okay. I would second his thought at the same uh, yeah. Because Thank the communication... So Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I think uh, we've come to uh, the conclusion of this webinar. So I encourage, I'm posting this uh, uh, page link with all the participants here. And I would request all of you to please check out the program, download the brochure. And uh, uh, and if you'd like to speak to our counselors, you can just fill in the form. Our counselors would contact you and would solve your queries individually. If there is any question you'd like, which we you want us to answer after the webinar, please write to us uh, and uh, we'll be, our experts would be happy to answer them through email as well. So uh, Himanshu, the recording would be uh, available on our YouTube channel. You can refer it and uh, we will email you the recording link on your email ID. So I would like to thank uh, Mohan Ram sir, Kulkarni sir and Darshan sir for taking out their precious time to guide our candidates to take up a right decision. So I am thankful to everyone, all the participants who uh, took out their time to attend this uh, insightful webinar on rail cybersecurity. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Jai Hind. Jai Hind, sir. Thank, Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Jai.